Hello, okay, let's talk RC controllers. Just a quick video to talk about the very, very basics on RC controllers. What I've got here is the FSI6X. This is a six channel um, RC controller, but you can also apply, you can put a 10 channel receiver, so it can go up to 10 channels. What do I mean by channels? Well, what channels are is different ways or different number of controlling servos or other devices. So on a typical receiver, I've got one here. This is the Tito's. Is you can see it's got this one's got six channels. Each of these channel numbers one, two, three, four, five, six apply to one of the sticks that's on the RC controller. So depending where you plug the servos. So the first thing, plugging servos in, uh, or any any type of controller. There's always three wires on a servo or any type of controller, which uh, I'll just show you on this one here. There we go. Uh, what you've got is you've got a brown, a red, and an orange. Now they could be black, red, and yellow, or black, red, and white. But what you've got is red in the middle is always five volts. That's the power to the servo. The black or the brown is always the negative. So between those two, that's a constant supply from whichever your power supply is. And the last one is a signal. And that's what that's what actually comes directly from your RC controller. That's what controls it. We've covered signals before. It uses PWM, which is a wave uh, wave pulse type signal and um, or a pulse. And what it does is it varies that pulse length between 1,000 and 2,000 with 1500 being in the middle, and therefore you can control the servos. You can go slightly beyond those wavelengths, which we can cover off in probably another video. So, um, connecting them up, really, really important thing is where do you apply the power? The power is always on the middle pin. Now, most RC controllers, you can apply the power onto any of these lines, so you don't have to necessarily use a dedicated power one, but on this one, you've got VCC at the end, which is your dedicated power, and then you've got your other channels. I always wire my power cables up on three pin connectors so that I'll keep the red in the middle. As long as the red's in the middle, you've not got much chance of damaging your RC controller. Even if you get your ground at the top or you get your ground at the bottom, you get them all mixed up. But, but on this one, ground is furthest away from this top label. Okay, and it plugs, power plugs in like that. The only way you'll damage it is if you apply ground to the bottom pin or the top pin. One thing to watch is on some of the cheap batteries and when, you, when you're buying cables, make sure you don't end up crossing over the red and the black. Five volts always has to be on the red, negative always has to be on the black. You can use, the only way you can really tell this is by using a meter, very, very important. And then the rest, you just connect like that. Each one of those corresponds to a channel on the RC receiver. So if I just apply this battery, I'll plug an external battery in and power him up. The first thing you see is a little red light flashes, which means that we've got power and we hear a little bit of a zzzz, which is a servo motor actually starting to run. So there we go. And he's sat there, servos whilst there's power, they're not really doing anything just at this moment. So if I now power up the RC controller, uh, and what it was doing there is it was telling me to put it in default position, which this is typically a throttle, so the last thing you want is an aeroplane flying off at full speed. Pull the throttle down to the bottom, switch all the switches up, and then you're good to go, like a pre-flight check as you would get if you were a pilot. Um, and then you've got channel one. Channel one is left and right. Channel two, forward, back. Um, channel three, uh, channel four. So there, there, they are all your channels that you've got controls of. And literally, all they're really doing is sending a signal to servos um, to move this servo around on each of those individual channels. Now, the, quickly, we'll now cover off the uh, how to get into the interfaces on these things. So on this controller, you press up, down, and the, um, and the on button, or the select button together, and you hold those three together. What it does, it goes into the menu system. I'll cover a quick things off here, but obviously there's a lot of information that goes through there. So the first one is you've, you've given two options, up and down changes. That one selects, and that one cancels out of it. In system, this is applies to the actual transmitter, so everything that sits in here. You can select the model, you can change the model name, you can do all sorts of interesting stuff. So I'm just gonna do model select. The interesting thing here, it tells you to uh, remove the power off the receiver first, so I'll do that. Um, 
is that what it'll actually do is you can have as many, pretty much as many models as you want connected to one receiver. So you can buy one receiver, uh, sorry, one transmitter, and you can buy lots and lots of the little RC receivers, stick them inside your models, and then you can just literally, as easy as that, you can flick over. So I, on this particular one, I've got Dobby, I've got DO2, uh, I've got Tito, I've got all I've got, and then I've got uh, a load of others that I can actually add extra models on there. So if I want to select Tito, what I do is I press the cancel button and I hold, and that saves my selection. If you just press the cancel button and release, it will cancel. So now I've selected Tito. Yep, so that's my model selected. There's lots of other options in there, so I'm not going to go through them. I'm going to nip into setup. What setup is then? It's specifically to the model that I've just selected. So a couple of things in there. Reverse lets you reverse these um, channels. So if you've got uh, uh, something that's going left, turning around when you push up and down, you can reverse channels. Or if the up and down nod isn't working as you want to, you can just reverse the channel. So a very quick and easy way rather than having to rewire or buy a servo reverser. Um, endpoints allows you to change how far that servo goes. As said before, they'll go between 1000 and 2000, but this will take you up from 800 to 1200. So it just gives you an extra bit of a boost if you're adding to speed. Uh, but what you can also do is tone it down. So on Tito channel 3, his nod, which is his up down head, uh, I put 50% so it doesn't go to the full extent of the servo. What it does is it goes a little bit lighter so his neck doesn't break off. It won't break off, but it wouldn't work. The other handy one is display. If you go into display, now what I can see is I can see the effects of what I've done with Tito's head nod. So if even though I'm pushing the joystick right the way up, you can see it's only going to 50%. Whereas when I want it to look left to right, it's going to 120. That's showing me the impact of what I've just done. The other thing I've got configured on here, which we talk about a lot on the channel, is tank drive. And so when I push these joysticks up and down it actually this is the main drive what it actually does is is it drives two different servos at the same time so uh, it allows you to very quickly check what's going on a good diagnostic tool um, auxiliary channels subtrain i won't go into any of these I'll, I'll cover two of the most useful ones the first one being mixes this is how you set tank drive up so you go into mixes and there's two mixes you need to set and what mix does is it takes the output of just one of these but sends it to two servo channels so it mixes the channels uh, one being the slave so this is saying that channel one which is the steering is the slave channel two the forward and backward is a master and what, I've, what it's set to is positive mix minus 100 and negative mix minus 100 okay and then the second mix i've got is where the master is channel two which is reversed so and the slave is channel one and you've got a positive mix of plus 100 and a negative mix of plus 100 that's a standard tank drive setup don't worry too much about what the technically what the mixes do but the difference is the master it reverses so master one negative 100 on both master two positive 100 on both the way you change things on here is that's the up down key if you want to go in and start to select you can press the up key to the relevant area so I get to the positive mix and I press the up down key to change that number. Once I'm happy with that number, if I hit cancel quickly, it will reset it so I won't save the settings. But once I'm happy, press and hold cancel and that's your mix is done. So that's your mix setting. The other thing I'll just quickly touch off is your dual rate. And this is where you go in to change the severity of something. So this is the severity, for example, of how quickly he turns left to right. If I want to change that severity down, so I want to tone that down, so what, what, what he's doing is spinning around like a lunatic when I'm moving left and right, I can press the down key and you'll see what happens is it, is it actually shows you on the display how that severity has now started to really tone down when I'm moving left or right. Um, and again, press and hold cancel to save and press cancel to come out. And then once you've done all the tweaks and things on your model, you press the cancel and you go back to the menu of there. Um, the last thing I'll cover off very, very quickly is binding. So if you've got a new model on there, you want to add a new a new uh, RC controller, what you've got to do is bind, fairly simple. Most of these come with a little binding loop, which effectively shorts out the bottom pin with the top tip pin. It doesn't touch the middle pin because that's five volts. And you can see there it's got little b which means bind so you put your you put your you put that binding pin across there that shorts those out 
and then what you do is you take your battery your battery can go on any of these channels it doesn't have to go on that top one that's just a spare one uh, so that you can use all of your channels but you can pop this into one of the servo channels like that with that bind key on and what that does is it puts this into bind mode so you'll see the light flashing when it's in bind mode and then all you do on the RC controller turn it off you've got on the bottom corner there a bind key so you press and hold that bind key um, and then while you're pressing and holding that bind key you turn the controller on put your switches in the right operation and, and what it's what it, as long as you've held that button and it says rx binding as soon as it finds a model it'll then bind it and it'll add it to the model list so that's how you'll end up with two three four five six seven models off the same controller um, and that was pretty much what I wanted to cover. Nice quick video. As I said, there's lots of options within those menus that you can use to configure, but hopefully that gets you started.